morning, everybody. Quiet group today. <clears throat> well, I gotta say, I think this is about the third time in less than a year I've been up in front of you folks talking about a, a Prius family product of some sort or another. So I think it's safe to say that uh, our chief engineer, Mr. Giso, has been a very busy man uh, in recent years. Um, Giso signed it is okay with me if you want to slow down a little bit. Uh, uh, <laughs> You're single handedly keeping me very busy this year, but, but, but thank you. <laughs> Um, so we're going to talk a little bit more today in depth about our, our new Prius C. Uh, we've heard a little bit about uh, why people are buying them, you know, and who's going to proposedly, uh, uh, you know, purchase the vehicle. But we're now going to look at maybe uh, a little bit more of the how and the why on the car. Let's get a little bit more in depth with this vehicle and give you a, a good detail of what our thoughts were behind the design and development. So we're going to talk about a few of our key features here, one of which is our revised hybrid uh, HSD, hybrid energy drive system on the Prius C, some of its new features and revisions, and uh, how we made this work in this uh, new smaller version of the car. We're also going to touch on a lot of our electronic technology, such as our driver selectable uh, modes, and a nice automatic climate control system, which is a great feature on a car in this class. And we'll also touch uh, for a while, as Bob mentioned earlier, on our multi-information display. This is a really fun bit that you'll have a chance to experience out there on the road today. And we think our new owners are going to very much enjoy this feature. And as well as our audio systems, Bob's also uh, touched uh, very briefly on that. You'll see uh, vehicles out there with our base audio and then those with our uh, display audio and navigation and in-tune features. And you'll have a chance to try those out today too. So I'll pause here for a moment and let you take a look at this. Uh, a lot of this data is in your press uh, materials there, but if you look up at the slide here, you'll see that the, the number one grade there, which is our, our entry vehicle, has got a great level of standard equipment. For a car in the subcompact class and at the price where we're getting folks into it with. And then as you move into grade two, you're going to add cruise control, uh, six way adjustable seat, the 60 40 split to a folding bench. We build on these grades as we go, uh, adding equipment and features as we move up the numbers there. And then as you get into the three and four grades, you're going to see things like push button start, smart key, uh, the enhanced audio systems with the Intune system, and then in the four grade, the ability to have a 16 inch wheel and tire package and uh, soft tech seats. Yes, sir. Um, so on Prius 1, does the rear seat fold down at all? or is It, it does. Just, okay. It folds, but it's not a 60-40 split. Yes, thank you. Good question. So we have kind of a logical progression here, which allows us then to cover a broad spectrum of these buyers as they move into the hybrid segment and are looking for that small, uh, maneuverable, and easy-to-drive urban car. Packaging is a big story. You know, as you start to shrink a vehicle down in its size, or you look at a smaller vehicle, packaging is, is very vital for a number of reasons. One is to maximize space in the car for your passengers. But also, it can be very, very important in order to help tailor or tune your vehicle's driving manners. So we're going to talk a little bit about packaging on both those angles today, uh, as far as location of our hybrid driveline components, uh, which allows us to maximize things such as cargo area, as Obiso san said earlier, uh, and also to maximize our space inside for the occupants. Also, the packaging it has to do with the outside styling. I'll show you some nice uh, styling slides from our design center and uh, show you a little bit about how we were working on keeping the vehicle's uh, uh, DNA there, but also enhancing and, and maintaining our uh, coefficient of drag. This next slide here is kind of interesting. I like this one because this really gives you kind of a ghosted image here on how these cars uh, look at uh, as compared to each other. If you look at the bottom there, you're going to see the Prius lift back data. That's the uh, outline in blue. So it gives you an indication there that Prius C is a full 18 inches plus shorter than the Prius lift back, and it's also nearly six inches shorter in the wheelbase. But here's another comparison that I've been getting a lot of from folks lately, and that is, you know, well, how does it compare to Yaris? This is a class a vehicle that we build that's been around for a bit. And as you can see here, uh, it's, it's similar in some ways that our wheelbase is longer. Uh, it's a little bit sleeker, a little bit lower in overall height. Uh, so there are some differences there, and Prius C runs on its own unique uh, style and has a, a body design that's unique for its uh, particular mission. The hybrid synergy drive system has got a blend of components here really designed to work well with this class of vehicle. We're going to run our uh, one and a half liter uh, gasoline engine with our HSD transmission system. The one and a half liter gas engine has been in service uh, with us for a bit. We've made some revisions to it and, and once again as, as time moves on here our technology uh, we continue to enhance that. It's still an Atkinson cycle engine. Uh, we are going to run a, a cool EGR system on that to help enhance fuel economy. But where we've made some big changes on this particular power plant is now everything is, is beltless on this engine now. Uh, we've eliminated any belt drive components, and it's all electrically driven from water pumps to uh, climate control systems. Uh, once again, we reduce friction that way. Uh, we can also help enhance, uh, or in this case, reduce cost of ownership over time. So here's kind of a quick summary of that there. Once again, if you look at our Atkinson cycle and EGR system, we're looking to reduce emissions uh, and then uh, improve thermal efficiency, once again, for emissions and economy. 
And then friction reduction, of course, is always great. You know, if we're not going to rob horsepower uh, to run accessories, we can then devote that to putting the car along the road. And then our, our catalytic converter activation uh, using a, you know, exhaust heat to transfer that sort of thing helps us to get that engine warm quickly and get her up to temperature and running efficiently. Now, some big news here is our transaxle assembly has been reduced in size. We've saved about 16% in weight on our HSD transmission, which of course includes our two electric motors and our power split planetary gear device. One of the ways we did this is we went to a, an ATF cooled system using an ATF transmission oil pump that allows us to get rid of that uh, fluid, uh, air fluid cooling radiator system. In fact, I was just talking to Ogiso san yesterday a little bit about this, and uh, our data is indicating now that this HSD transmission using a, a two motor system and a dual mode capability is now approaching the same weight as many of our competitor single motor type systems out there, and also uh, you know, maintaining a very small size profile, which once again allows us to fit this system in this car. Prius C is a small enough vehicle where our current 1.8 liter system you'd find in liftback simply will not fit under the hood. So packaging, once again, also can involve the engineering of your components to make them fit in the vehicle that you choose to put them in. Our battery pack has been uh, very, very much changed. Uh, there's some drastic changes here. We're putting it in a different location. I'll talk about it in a moment. But the other key difference is it is way, way reduced in weight. If you haven't looked at your specs already, the battery pack on a Prius C weighs in at about 68 pounds, whereas the battery pack on a Prius liftback weighs about 92 pounds. We've reduced operating voltage to 144 using 120 cells, where the Prius liftback battery runs at about 201.6 volts. So it's a little bit uh, reduced in size, uh, and we do that for a number of reasons. One of which is that we want to work again on our packaging. We've got 17.1 cubic feet of cargo area on the car because we do not put the battery behind the rear seat like we do in the Prius liftback. We've now moved it underneath the rear seat. It is lower in the car. That lets us have more space back in the cargo area. And as Obiso san mentioned earlier, it also allows us to have a lower center of gravity on the vehicle for enhanced handling. So your, your high voltage battery, as you see in this slide, lives there in the center, and then on the far left there, kind of in orange you're going to see, that's where the auxiliary battery is, our 12 volt batteries. So anybody that needs to get to a battery in this car is going to need to look under their rear seat. But once again, for packaging purposes, it works out great. Have a little bit more story on that later coming at you too. Uh, up under the hood, same thing, our electronics continue to shrink. Our inverter is also smaller and lighter which allows us to have more space under the hood. It allowed our stylus to enhance the hood angle a little bit to give you a better view out over the front of the car and have more room to play with the styling on it too. And those components were also lower mounted in, in the uh, engine compartment also to help re uh, reduce or lower that center of gravity. Our driving modes, we offer an echo mode and an EV mode as well as normal mode, which is your default mode. You'll have a chance to try those out today. These modes operate very much the same as our other Prius family vehicles that you've driven in recent times. So your EV mode, if you press that button, you'll get an EV mode indicator up on your information, uh, your, your panel up above your dash, and you're going to be able to drive at speeds up to about 25 miles an hour, and you'll be able to throttle the car a little bit more in doing so without kicking the gas engine on. Now remember though, when you get out there today, especially if you're out on your first circuit, the car has to be up to operating temperature and the battery has to be sufficiently charged. If those conditions are met, then you should have a good capability in some of your routes today to try the EV mode out. And then echo mode is, is uh, what it always has been for us. I, I like to uh, say that this is a nice uh, device that helps the driver out there that has troubles modulating their, their, their feet. You know, if you're a driver who's either uh, firewalled or off the gas and there's no middle ground, this is a nice feature for you in that it helps modulate your throttle output. As you depress the pedal, we're not going to give you as much throttle output on the car as you would in normal mode. And it also will also reduce the uh, uh, operation levels of the climate controls. It will detune your air conditioning and heat a touch to help reduce power consumption. So this is a great way to help a driver maintain or improve good fuel economy with the car. Once again, basically unchanged. Uh, here's your uh, system indicator with an eco score. We'll talk about this in more detail. But if you are driving your Prius C and you are at low speeds but not in, in EV mode, but your car is operating in electric capability at that time, you will see a little indicator there on your multi-information display. That's just letting you know that your gas engine is currently off. It doesn't mean you've pressed the button, but it's letting you know that you are operating in electric mode. Styling and design. Once again, aerodynamics here. Here's some nice drawings from our design center that worked on the, uh, the Prius C. So you can see some of the concepts there, and then you can see as we moved into a production vehicle, of course, uh, the engineering takes place and things change a touch, but there's the look and feel. Ogiso mentioned uh, the, uh, the lowered grille. That's our under-priority styling design. That's kind of been a, a theme of ours of late uh, to give the car a very low and stable look. On the engineering side, we actually worked very, very hard on the air intake to the radiator uh, 
on this uh, front of the car here to maximize airflow and to make it more efficient through there to help our aerodynamics out. Once again, we're at 0.28, where previous lift back is 0.25. And the styling like this really is where you get a lot of that done. You know, the, the smaller cars out there have a, have a different ratio of length to, to, to height and side profile. And as you shorten the length of the car up, it makes it more challenging to get a good coefficient of drag uh, through a wind tunnel or in just regular highway conditions. So we're working here with arrow corners and smooth design techniques to try to make that airflow uh, over the car move as best as possible. You can see at the back we've got some nice unique tail lamps there that really set Prius C apart from its brothers. Uh, on that back side there you have a nice view of it uh, from there with the uh, enhanced slide and there's your actual production vehicle. And that of course is in our habanero color. You'll see one of those out there today. Our color palette is very bright and enthusiastic. I won't uh, name them all off. It's in your materials but you'll have a sampling of those today too. Further airflow management techniques, if you look under the car, people tend to forget about the underside of a car, but that's very important. We've got a couple of fins up front there to help direct air around the key components and also at the rear to manage air. And then along the side mirrors and on the rear uh, bezels of the rear tail lamps, just like we did with the 2012 Camry, we now have some vortex generators or aero stabilizing fins, some people call them. And those are designed to pull the air vortices around the side of the car in close to help stabilize Prius C at highway speeds. Further moving on into the interior design, here's an early sketch of the, of the look and feel from our designer. And then in the production car, what you have here is an interior dash that really gives both front occupants that feel of having each of them having 60% of the dash area to themselves. The front seats are rather large for a vehicle in this class. I fit in there quite nicely. I'm over six feet four, and it's got a lot of headroom. The seats are nice. I like the bolsters in the seats. Uh, the, the Prius uh, C is really designed to be a very maneuverable and if, if configured a very sporty handling car. So we've given you seats here that will help support you if you want to get out there and have a little bit more of, of an enthusiastic experience today. And then of course our back seats on the 2, 3, and 4 grade are 60-40 split folding. And as we showed you earlier, then can be configured to handle, of course, various cargo uh, bits and, and or passengers or both. And then once again in review here, overall dimensions, uh, overall length at 157.3 about 18 inches shorter than the Prius liftback. For the vehicle in this class, though, a 100-inch wheelbase is actually rather large. If you look at some of the competitor products out there, we have a very, very long wheelbase, which once again allows us to have a very comfortable feeling car inside. And I'll be very interested to hear what you all think about that today uh, as you drive it and experience it. You can see here some of the more of the engineering drawings uh, superimposing our, our passenger in there and how we have a good couple distance, a lot of hip room and shoulder room. So once again, small exterior footprint, but a lot of space inside is what we're shooting for here. Now, suspension and chassis is where we have some interesting stories. The design of these components, or the architecture of them, is very traditional for us with a McPherson strut up front and a torsion beam out back. But now as we start to add components to these systems, we can have some changes. Uh, you'll see we have a mixture of both steel wheels with caps and also alloy wheels. In fact, your uh, one, two, and uh, three grades will have uh, standard steel wheels with cap in 15-inch size. The three grade has an optional 15-inch alloy. Uh, the 4 grade will have a standard 15 inch alloy with an optional 16 inch alloy wheel. And depending on what wheel package you put on the car, uh, you can actually alter its manners a little bit. <clears throat> we'll talk about that in a moment. Brakes are, uh, once again, traditional for this size car and this type with a ventilated front disc and a trailing uh, drum in the back. <clears throat> but remember with Prius C, we have regenerative braking assisting these brakes. So you have both electric and hydraulic braking. So I think you'll find today when you get out there that Prius C stops with authority. And we'll talk a little bit about our steering. Our steering wheel is very much like that in the Prius. And as you can see, we have steering wheel controls. We have our touch tracer system. I'll show you in a moment that it was also featured on Prius C, as it is on the lift back. And finally, our electric power steering and our, our rack and pinion setup there, you can see on this slide, really kind of wraps up the suspension and chassis part of it. And so here, of course, we can tune the electric power steering for any vehicle size and weight. So EPS is great for us. It consumes no power when it's not in use. It's very efficient and tunable. The other thing is on the steering racks, we have a couple of different ratios we offer. So if you have a Prius C with a 15-inch wheel, that vehicle is focused, main focus is for maneuverability and easy driving in the city. That gets you your best turning radius. And the turning radius on this car is smaller than those of our key competitors out there like Mazda 2 or Ford Fiesta. Uh, you, in, in addition, though, if you go to the 16-inch uh, tire now, what you're going to see is a different steering rack ratio with a little bit more of a rapid response steering setup to it. Uh, so that this car will handle a little bit more responsibly there. And once again, with the bigger tire and wheels, you've got a bigger contact passage. Uh, 
pass. It's a bigger contact percentage, which is going to allow this car to have much more of a, of a sporting feel to it. So you have two different ways you can kind of configure this car, depending on what your orientation is as a driver. NVH is always important on cars, and especially with the littler ones, when you start getting small, you got to work hard to keep them quiet. We have a lot of insulating uh, panels using uh, various asphalt type materials and other products located in key areas to, to quell sound. Also, we've, we've changed some of the, the chassis design uh, a bit here to reinforce areas that, that we've seen that uh, will help the vehicle perform uh, well in the NVH uh, category and also to help uh, improve chassis rigidity. This is a shot of our torsion beam suspension here. I'm going to walk over to my slide for a sec. You can see this is the torsion beam out here. These little red areas here are additional uh, strengthening uh, points we've actually bolted up in there under the pivot points. And that is designed to once again further enhance the rigidity of the chassis back there where that torsion beam is interacting with it to help keep Prius C flat in the turns. So once again, toss it around a little bit out there today and, and see what you think. But we've done a lot of good engineering work here to make the car nimble and also very maneuverable. In addition to that, sound absorbing and sound insulation materials, we've done it on these key areas here in my slide. We've also added some additional insulation up on the roof of the car to help reduce solar load input to, to the vehicle too to keep it uh, cool in the summertime. And some additional sound absorbing and insulation materials uh, in addition to what I showed you earlier along the side panels and then some of the other key areas too. So once again, working very hard here to make this a, a pleasant experience, let you enjoy your sound system and enjoy your car out there on the road. So moving into our electronics, once again, if you think about it, for a car that uh, we, we look to see maybe a, a first-time buyer getting into or a young buyer getting into, we've got a lot of electronics here to, to show them and to let them interact with. Our multi-information display has many different features that, that really allows you as a driver to interact with your car as much as you'd like. You can be uh, minimally involved with it, so to speak, or you can really, really get down in there and, and get in the weeds with it and really uh, pay attention to a lot of things that the car is doing. So here's your energy monitor screen. This is pretty much traditional hybrid information, right? But beyond that, you can go to a drive information screen, a screen here, which will also display then things such as your average speed, uh, driving time, even outside temps. And once again, basic data here. And what you do is you touch your display button on that steering wheel, and it will toggle this little menu around. And then when, you, when it locks onto something, you just wait, and it will then throw this up for you. Your echo score. This is one we saw earlier where I was showing you the EV indicator. I now want to talk about the lower right of this slide there where the echo score is. And as you can see there, we have an 82 out of 100. What this is going to look at, look at is your last, 100, uh, uh, your, your last 100 trips, and then also then look at how you're currently doing. So this person here is not having an outstanding day. But then below that, you'll notice we have a start, cruise, and stop area there. And what that is is that's giving you, the driver, a rating on how well you're accelerating in the, from, the, from a standing stop, which would be like the start portion of it, how well you're managing your Prius C while you're maintaining a, a stable vehicle speed, and that would be the cruise portion of this rating, and then the stop portion of the rating is how well are you regen braking, and how effectively are you saving a, a fuel in your braking practices. So it's really kind of breaking your driving habits down into three sections, Wayne staring at me there. Um, but yeah, it's going to break it down for you to help you focus better and be a better driver on, on some of these areas. You may be able to find some areas that maybe I wasn't uh, managing my throttle as well as I thought I was. So this gives you a little more detail. So once again, this is your choice as an owner driver to, to interact and look at these type of things. And then your five minute consumption, this has been around a bit of course, so on the right you're going to see your instantaneous fuel economy and then your last 30 minutes worth of driving there and what your average has been for those five minute segments to also maybe help you see how you're doing in different driving conditions. Now, here's where we get to some new information, echo savings. You have the ability, if you own a Prius C, to put, program in a cost per gallon of gasoline. And at that point in time, the echo savings screen here is going to give you the ability to see a fuel cost. So on this particular trip, this driver has spent $3.81 worth of gasoline based on the fuel cost that they programmed into the car. And you can see this view and still be able to take advantage of your hybrid system uh, drive indicator there too. And how many gallons you burned based on like, the calendar months, and it'll also give you the same month one year ago. So another way to slice the pie there, right, to really study how your driving habits are. And yet another variation of this allows you to see over those past months and one year ago how much fuel you saved, both in, in, uh, in this case dollars, but then still also giving you a report of how many gallons you burned. And then it is a bit of competition, so like the Olympic Games, we have a podium. And uh, so here you can see it memorizes once again your 100 best trips. And in this case, here this driver is doing, you know, okay, not great, but not having a bad day. But the nice thing is, is this driver can say, okay, today I'm ranked 56th versus my previous history. But I do, I still feel good about myself because at one point in time, 
I had an 87.4 trip there on December 19th of 11 over a 36 mile trip, and then I can still pat myself on the back, right? <laughs> so it's a good way to kind of, once again, track your, your behaviors, or also when you loan your car out to your friend, you can see just how bad they are. You know? <laughs> So there's different things you can look at there. So a lot of information that you can bring in. This data is known by the car. We're going to let this now uh, interact with the driver, vice versa. You can really track what's going on with your vehicle. And then finally, a graphical representation of that, uh, showing your economy over some months and a year ago. And then it will also tell you goodbye when you shut the car off and give you a quick trip summary. So once again, a great bit of technology, right, on a, on a car that's, uh, you know, starting out at under $19,000. It's a standard on all of them. So a great bit of technology here for those young, maybe new hybrid drivers that are coming into a Prius family to help them uh, get acquainted with their car. And also, when you do use your steering wheel controls, you'll see the touch tracer display on that multi-information display. That's where your indication will be for climate and, of course, audio control information, too. Another great feature is our automatic climate control systems. It's not a manual system. You do have an auto button there you see on the slide. So if you want, you can uh, hit the auto button and turn the dial to select the temperature you want, and then the system will do what it needs to do to get you there. And another great thing is that many of our competitor vehicles, you know, especially the, the one motor uh, folks out there, are still running climate control systems that are built driven and shut off when the car's engine is not running. And of course, ours are all electrically driven, so you get AC function whether the gas engine is on or off. And we like that feature. And once again, in a car in this class, we think that's fabulous. Another bit of electronics there for that new owner to enjoy. And then on the three and four grades, you're going to see the smart key system on the front doors and rear hatch. And of course, the steering wheel controls and our upgraded audio system. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the Intune system today. I think I've talked to you folks about that quite a bit in the last year here. But our three and four grade cars out on the drive course today, all are equipped with, with radios and phones prepared. So please enjoy the Intune system and your navigation system as you're out there driving around today. Uh, feel free to check your weather forecast, although there's much to see out there. It's been sunny and nice and probably going to stay that way. And then, of course, you've got Pandora and Bing uh, on these systems. Uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the storage spots here. You'll be able to explore these too. But once again, you know, this is another packaging story right here for us. And that is, you know, where, where do you have your creature comforts available to you? I like the driver's seat upper tray there on the left. I think that's kind of nice. I can put the small articles up there, a pen or something, or maybe something I, I want to take a look at. Although if I move to the right side of the, the dashboard up there above the glove box, you're going to see a great storage tray that has a USB port and aux port for the uh, aux port there also. And then a single level glove box and a great center console area there. I'll uh, advance the slide and you can see the storage areas here. So there's your glove box and then once again, you've got a great spot there for your phone. Our body structure too, once again, Prius C is over 500 pounds lighter than the lift back. And one of the ways we did that is by using extensive amounts and key amounts of high strength sheet steel in certain locations where it allows us to save weight but also maintain excellent chassis rigidity. We've also used aluminum, as you can see on the slide, on some of our hood and hatch components there, once again for weight savings. Up front here you see a nice colored slide of our radiator support area designed to help strengthen that area. But also note the two gray areas to the outside. Those are our crash boxes or crumple zone areas there in the front of Prius C. Once again, designed to absorb and manage energy into the front of the car if you do have a frontal collision, which none of you are going to have today, right? <laughs> In addition to that, we've reinforced the halo area of the rear hatch for chassis rigidity, and then also spot welds on key locations there for agility also and chassis rigidity. And uh, since we're kind of segueing into that, we'll talk a little bit about safety. Of course, Prius C, as, a, as our whole lineup does, is imbued with the star safety system and all those components, including our smart stop technology. And then moving into the airbags, we have nine total in Prius C. We've got our usual suspects, the uh, front uh, passenger steering wheel and dash mounted. We've got uh, front seat side airbags. We have two side curtain airbags. And then we've got the new ones. We've got a driver's knee airbag. And we have seat cushion airbags for the driver and front passenger. And a uh, collision of sufficient severity, those front seat cushion airbags will inflate to help bring the seat cushion up and help maintain you in a good position in relation to your seat belt. So it's about occupant positioning. And those are, that's not a very explosive, it's not a, a, you know, an explosive type airbag, it's a gas powered one. It just changes that shape, shape of the lower seat cushion there to help better position you. So we got three new ones there for a total of nine on Prius C. I showed you some slides earlier about the front chassis. Here's an energy management uh, view here of what we're looking to do. Spreading impact energy from the front of that vehicle along the side rails and up to the roof panel of the car to try to maintain cabin integrity. That's the name of the game. And then from the side, we have side impact door beams, and our B-pillar uh, works well to reinforce the vehicle uh, from side impacts. And then also our battery store. We're back to that under-the-seat battery. The seat frame also acts as a battery support and protection structure, 
And if you look there on the left, you'll see out there by the figure A, we've got some additional materials in there, a crash box in that door designed to also absorb energy so that the door can actually act as a bit of a buffer from side impacts to help protect the battery area under the seat there. And then finally, we have our vehicle proximity notification system, uh, which once again is going to make Prius C, as well as its other brothers out there now starting in 2012, uh, audible to those in the city. So if you're, you're putting around in electric mode, you'll hear a soft whirring noise coming from the car. Typically, you've got to roll your window down to hear it, but if you do, you can give a listen. And that's just to, to help the pedestrians out there you know, pay attention to the car and notice it when it's out roaming around it on electric power at low speeds. And as you can see by the graph, the sound will increase in pitch a bit as you increase your vehicle speed. Now with that, I'd like to thank you for your time this morning, and we will ask uh, Mr. Greg Tommy to come up, and also Mr. Bob Carter and Viso San if we can come up and we'll do a short Q&A for you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Sure. So we'll go ahead and open it up to uh, any questions anybody has for any of the three gentlemen. Uh, Christy? Slide showing that this is a shorter vehicle than the car, it's also a smaller wheelbase. Is this, what's the lineage of this vehicle in terms of the platform? Platform, the, we use basically the, the Yaris based platform, but applied uh, so many uh, additional development to store the uh, hybrid system especially the, under the regime, we store hybrid batteries. And at the same time, we include the performance of the underbody platform to uh, adding the strength of the liquidity for the body and so on. So the result of that, uh, this Christie's body chassis is based on Yaris, but performance itself is greatly improved. Increased control by itself. Uh, Sorry, do you have a weight uh, comparison that we get between the Prius C and the Yaris Oh, the, the, sorry, the, the we, we can get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have that in the back. Andy, do you have that happy? If not, we can get you offline on that, because this just matters looking at the Yaris. Prius C is about 2,500 pounds. Yaris is going to be much lighter, so a couple hundred pounds lighter. Yeah. 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 MSRPs include destination? Plus, no, they, you have to add plus destinations. So and, uh, those are base MSRPs for the package. Destination fee is 760, 760. so plus 760 with the uh, destination. Thanks. Sarah, go on. What are the competitors to this car? Vehicles like the Ford Fiesta, Mazda 2? Yeah. Uh, of course, this Chris is uh, the segment of this Chris is uh, subcompact. Uh, so, the, uh, in that market, uh, Master 2 and Ford Fiesta already exist. Is the, so, is the insight? And, the, and also, the insight is closer to Chris C as a hybrid dedicated model. But, uh, or, really or, honestly, my opinion. I do not set uh, on any certain uh, competitors because uh, Prius Cambys goes beyond or goes faster than the competitors. So for me, I mainly concentrate on my point of view to the customer's demand. How to uh, create, uh, how to create the uh, future car which customer will, will, will be happy or something like that. And that is my way of uh, making concept. Not competing, not thinking competing uh, competitive speaker, but also the, uh, answering the demand for the uh, customer's voice is my first priority. Yeah, what, uh, what percent of these structures high strength steel and also what is its uh, percentage of recyclability? Percentage. Our slides show the types of the steel, but as far as overall percentage, you, you got to. Uh, oh, I see. The, the, uh, you might have to double check on that one for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, about, about 50% or something. Sorry, this 
will uh, upgrade the novel. And our percent of recyclability is something we never publish typically either. It's uh, just beyond our control as manufacturers, so it's good at all to, to calculate that too. Uh, no? uh, just a couple things. Um, so, Bob, in terms of volume, saying 15 to 20 percent, so ballpark about 30,000 units you'd be able to get from the uh, closer, closer, yeah, in the upper 30, 35 to 40,000 is where we're going to start. Okay. The day can go higher. Every time I give sales forecasts, this is the strength of Toyota. We have the production capability that once it hits the market, will allow the consumer demand to pull it. That's our initial forecast. Uh, and that would be the first. 12 months or in 2012? 2012. In 2012. Um, and then uh, on the plug-in, when you were going through the family, it looks like you actually squeezed an extra mile out of the plug-in. Uh, uh, you have 50 MPG combined now. It was only 49 last uh, last fall. And I think, was your MPG equivalent up a little bit as well? Yes. Uh, and these are still estimates right now, but we previously told you that MPG-E was at 87. Right. Um, now we're, it's still estimates, but now we're confident that it's going to be 95 finalized. And the combined would go from 49 to 50. But those are still estimates. They should be released in a couple of weeks. And what, how did that, maybe Ogiso something, can you talk a little bit about how that, how that happened? <laughs> because the uh, plug-in, the battery of the plug-in is very good as well. Perform so result of the uh, good performance, the newly designed zero wire battery for plug-in type uh, helps to improve the uh, MPG. So and at the same time we took additionally tuned a lot of control program uh, nearly to the plug-in hybrid because the, of course the base hybrid system is common to the regular. But we uh, added additional new technology, especially onto the fire uh, choice control program, together with the newly designed lithium ion battery for driving The Part of this is also just due to the fact that we you know, had early preliminary testing, you know, we spoke to you a few months ago about it, and now we're getting closer to final, final testing. So a lot of this is just simply a factor of time, and this is not unusual for us to see some minor changes in our fuel economy. That as we get closer to launch. Um, any significant differences between the market that we sold here and those sold in global markets? <laughs> About the any significant uh, global differences? Uh, uh, Christy, Christy, yeah, the, well, Christy. Uh, so Christy, the basically the same. The completely the same. The, the only difference is the uh, headlamps and uh, uh, of course, a uh, right hand rover, left hand rover, something related to the homologation of the regulation. What's the fuel capacity? Fuel tank capacity. Andrew, do you have the fuel tank capacity? 9.5 gallons. Yeah, uh, two, two quickies. Do these battery cells the same as the electric? Yes, basically, the cell, cell itself is the same. And on the inverter, did you do anything special to shrink the size and the weight? Or is it the new technology in the same way? Yeah, we uh, added the new technology for the inverter to shrink the size. Especially the cooling system is for the inverter. Uh, we get the Prius here in North America. In Japan, it's the just the Toyota Aqua. They were designed, you know, pretty much identically. When you approached the design of it, did you approach the Aqua and the Prius C to be a Prius, or did it just kind of happen that way? That, uh, that that's a very good question. Then, uh, as I explained before, the, this is the, of course this Prius C belongs to the Prius family, but. Uh, target customer is a younger customer, so uh, my opinion is we should not uh, uh, not go. We should not too much go within Prius itself. We have to expand the Prius uh, image to 
towards a younger customer. This is the basic approach for the uh, concept making of Prius C. So uh, even if the name is Prius, belongs uh, to Prius family and name uh, rather Prius, but we wanted to uh, expand Prius image into younger customers. And that is the original uh, concept and the image. And uh, speaking for the Japanese market situation, Prius is greatly, greatly, or uh, awfully well sold in Japan. So on the road, Everywhere, everywhere, Prius, 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 Prius. <laughs> and uh, uh, recently, uh, Prius B is coming, so many. So, uh, considering about current Japanese market situation, we uh, dare to avoid to use Prius name, because there are too many uh, Prius is on the road. And uh, Japanese customers have some, some of Japanese customers have the negative image of uh, Prius itself. It is too strict to the environment zone, uh, a little bit far away from the fun image. So we dare to use uh, non Prius family name, especially in the Japanese zone. Okay. So I'll just add to that, you know, keep, I think it's pretty known, but within the, the Japan domestic market, Toyota is, is marketed under five channels. You know, we have three channels here, Scion, Scion Lexus, and, and Toyota, but all Prius is marketed under Toyota. So it gives us an advantage to use a, the same name globally, <clears throat> but in, in Japan, it's marketed, these products are marketed through different dealer channels. So that's why you're seeing also a little bit of difference in it in how it's marketed under the Okay. <clears throat> a couple questions. Is this built on the Prius line or the Yaris line? Oh, it's not a uh, production line. Uh, production line is different from the uh, Prius and also different from the Yaris line. The production uh, line of Prius C is located in the uh, Tohoku region of the Japan. So, uh, mainly dedicated to the uh, plant for the Prius C. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, you may know well that uh, last year, uh, Tohoku region suffered a very, very severe uh, disaster of the, from the earthquake and the tsunami. So, this car is one of the symbols for them for the recovery of this disaster. So, so this is, uh, uh, maybe I'll help you there a little bit to what Visa said. The, the line that this is built on, for North American products, the TC is also built on that line. So it's TC, Prius C, and then two products are built on that line that we don't import to North America. So it, it, there's four four products on that line, but it's, it's exclusive to the Prius line. And then also, uh, I see the, the fuel economy numbers of, of 53, 46, and 50. Uh, I assume that's in normal mode. If you were to run the same EPA test cycle in eco mode, what sort of fuel efficiency savings would you be able to, to get? So have you been able to put a percent on it? Uh, I, I cannot directly answer you <laughs> at this moment. Because uh, recently, EPA test mode is complicated because they are now trying to add new uh, measurement method. So uh, before, the EPA test mode is very, very simple. Without climate control, or just uh, driving on the uh, uh, dynamo. And uh, recently, they are now trying to add it the actual uh, test under the climate condition and sunlight and the cold weather and so we, we cannot, at this moment, we cannot answer with you the, directly what is the difference of the vehicle mode. Uh, three, on the actual road driving condition, roughly the 5 to 10 percent improvement rate, rate exists, but that much, much depends on the driving condition. And that's hot on the cold weather, it will uh, uh, reflect better and uh, 
There's a lot of variables there. Yeah. That's what we'll do with that. Yeah. Will, will, will either the new transaxle or the new cooling technology or the new cooling boot just the new transaxle hit on other hybrids? Is there another last one? Um, from now on, probably the new technology from FreeC will expand into other model, but needs some uh, preparation time. So especially the uh, new motor structure, we use the new uh, wiring of the motor coiling system. So the new structure will be core for our hybrid. In uh, the regular Prius and the, the trim levels, the, the one isn't really marketed or, or sold to consumers very much. It's, it's just not, a, you know, it's not available in that readily. I take it with this one, the one will be targeted in demand. What's your kind of thinking on the uh, trim level breakdown in terms of sales? So we, we, it's simply our initial production forecast, but we see about 50% in one and two. So. Uh, unlike uh, unlike the liftback, where one is available as a special order, uh, liftback really starts the volume starts at two. Fifty percent of this volume, so it gives us fifty percent base MSRP under twenty, and then obviously the other fifty would be made up of, of three and four, but dominantly on the three. So we're we're one. It's initial estimate. One will be around ten percent. Four would be around 10 percent. Two and three would be uh, where we anticipate most of the volume is going to be. What's the price differential between the starting lift and the base model C? So if you line the 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 four packages are pretty comparable in terms of uh, complement. So or, uh, content. So if you go to Prius 1, 2, and 3, and you compare a Prius 2 to Prius 2, for instance, the C to B, the C is about $4,000 less than the lift bag. When you go to Prius 4, the top of the line, the delta becomes about $5,000. So content to content, four to 5,000, depending what, what spec level you're looking at. For the folks in the back, fact check me. I'm right there. You're good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, Honda has seen uh, spectacular success with the Insight, even though it's you know also sort of marketed as a, an affordable hybrid. Do you think what what do you think you guys are going to do different or better or? Well, I've seen that at all. Some differences stem from their system. I mean, uh, the Insight is maybe affordable, but it's a, a single motor system. Uh, it has all the inherited uh, weaknesses of that. It's uh, city fuel economy is not as uh, substantial as it would be in a two-mode system like a Toyota system that has two motors. Uh, so I mean, there, there's I think just from, just from this basic architecture, I think it does fall short in, in that area there. Where our Prius C with a 53 mpg city rating can really very much benefit that urban customer with some excellent city fuel economy. Yeah. 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 That's, that's a perfect answer. And the. Uh, at the same time, the uh, inside itself looks bigger, but the interior space of the yeah, inside is uh, relatively small, especially your passenger room, areas, and space is very narrow, and the uh, real estate is better. It's confirmed by it. I think we have time for one more question. All three gentlemen will be around all day, though, so if you have any other questions that come up, feel free to talk to them anytime. So we have time for one more. <coughs> Anybody else have questions? Eric? How quick is it? Zero to six. Is that a six